Hey everyone, welcome to a new series that I'm calling Niche Technology. This is where I share the weird, the specific, and the under the radar pieces of tech that are built for tinkering, hacking, and in some cases, actually integrating into your security testing toolkit. And today we've got something really interesting. We've got the XTNC device. It is a tiny $40 e-reader that snaps to the back of your phone. Because it's built on an ESP32, it's a really cool playground for anybody who is interested in getting under the hood with their hardware, building firmware, and actually customizing a piece of tech. So let's talk specs, because this thing is absolutely tiny. This is a 4.3 inch e-ink screen. So it's much smaller than a Kindle, it's about half the size of a Kindle. If you've not used an e-ink screen before, e-ink technology is supposed to be a bit easier on your eyes, especially when it comes to reading large portions of text. And the way this works is because it uses charges to actually pull the black and white particles up into the display, which then forms the letters. And so it's a really different technology to how a typical phone screen looks. This is a 220 PPI black and white display, and it doesn't have a front light or a back light, and it's not going to touch screen this is just controlled by some buttons it's very light it's 74 grams for reference an iphone pro is around 200 grams it's really easy to carry with you put in your pocket this device uses usb-c charging it's esp32 based and it's got 128 megabytes of ram it ships with a 32 gigabyte sd card and this is more than enough for most books if you're reading something like comic books that have a lot of images and therefore you need more storage space it's compatible with sd cards up to 500 112 gigabytes. Because this is actually a really small e-ink device, you could use it for much more than an e-reader. You could turn this into a control panel for your smart home. You could use it as a little conference badge. You have lots of other choices. But let's talk about the reading experience. I've always been like a massive reader in my life. I read it almost every single day. My current go-to e-reader is a Books Go Color 7. The advantage of something like a Books is because it's got a full Android operating system, you have a lot of choices in which apps you use. You can use things like the Kindle app. You can use third-party apps like BookFusion or CoReader. You can have PDFs. Use a PDF reader. And this doesn't always fit fantastically in my pocket. I have to squeeze it in there just because of the larger size of it. Now this device, it's not going to be as customizable as something like an Android tablet or even like an iPad. This is really a minimal device. In terms of aesthetics, it's very clean. It reminds me a lot of Apple products in the kind of slick, clean design. It comes in either white or black. I have the white version. It's got a very smooth back. It's not textured in any way. It's got a little lanyard hole and it has eight buttons on it. So we have four buttons on the front, two big kind of volume rocker style buttons which have two buttons on the inside. So we've got yes, no, page forward, page back. We have a reset button on the side here and we have an on and off switch. And then we have another volume rocker. Again, the advantage of having this many page forward buttons means you have a lot of choices in how you wanna hold this device. I have quite small hands and this is really comfortable to hold. But when I asked somebody with larger hands to hold it, they found it really uncomfortable and struggled to find a good way to grip it. If you are considering getting one of these devices, I don't think the stock firmware is that good. Instead, remove the stock firmware and flash Crosspoint Reader. Crosspoint Reader is an open source firmware built by the community. And because it's ESP32 based, it is so easy to write your own features. The community is developing so quickly and so many cool features that it's well worth it to go and use the community firmware instead. And the project is really active. As recording, there was 35 pull requests from members of the community all adding features here. I think it very clearly has advantages. I think the control scheme is a lot nicer. The user interface is easier to use and I think it makes a lot more sense. To upload content to this device, you can use the web file transfer interface. Now this file transfer will open up a web server on the device that you can then go to on any computer and you can just pick your books and drag them in. I want to show you quickly the control scheme. So again, this is not the stock firmware that comes on this device. This is Crosspoint Reader. And you can see we have the four buttons here. So these work like volume rockers. You can press the left side of the button to do something and the right side of the button does something else. At the side here, this is also works like a volume rocker. And then on this side, we have the confirm go backwards. And this is what the book looks in portrait mode. You can hold it like this. 
like you would if you're scrolling on a phone or you can hold it say like this and use the buttons here in landscape counterclockwise you go back and forward you also have the option to switch this to be the other way around so if you want your buttons on the top versus buttons on the bottom maybe you want to hold the device like this you can do that too this hasn't got a gyroscope so if i do this it's not going to do it automatically you do have to go into the settings and change it so on the topic of settings, there's quite a lot of settings here. You have options to change how the sleep screen looks. You have choices of how you want to display a status bar. You can change the reader font size, the line spacing and the margin. I would suggest having this to be as little as possible that you need to read because quite simply, it's such a small device that if the text is too big, it's borderline unreadable. I think you want to make these as small as you can comfortably read it. Then at the very bottom here, you have settings for Calibre. So Calibre, if you've not used it before, is an ebook library application that you install on your computer. Now, somebody has taken the Calibre database format and developed something called Calibre Web, which is your own version of the Kindle store. I can go in here and I can say, go to authors, I can go to the letter B and I can look Clive Barker and now I can download this book directly from my local cloud service to my device. So now when I go back to my browse files in books, that book is going to be there with the same folder structure as Calibre has by default. When you're actually in a book, I've already said you can go forwards and backwards. The confirm button can then show you the list of chapters and you can navigate via chapters and then if you hold the back button it's going to take you to the home screen now if you do use a kindle and you've seen its version of flipping through pages where you can see a kind of preview of the page right in the middle this does not have that you only have the choice to navigate via chapters and to give you a comparison of what this feels like when compared to say my books when you actually look at reader controls you have a lot more options you can change directions you can change alignments you can change the font style the mud, you can really customize this experience. Now, one of the kind of ways this advertises itself is these MagSafe rings that it comes with. The idea being is what they want you to do is to get your phone, which is compatible with MagSafe and stick it on the back like this, and then you carry them both together. This is very much a gimmick. I do put MagSafe rings on all my devices because I use things like pop sockets to actually make it a bit more comfortable for me to hold and what I found the most comfortable style is this kind. This one has a very small amount of like fabric in the middle. This is quite an uncomfortable pop socket to use for like my books or my iPad. It's very comfortable on this device. While the MagSafe ring is a gimmick because you don't really attach to the back of your phone, I do think it's useful. Despite the lack of a front light, I actually find this device very readable. I still can read this even with a really dim light on in my bedroom. So even though I already have my own e-reader, why did I buy this? In terms of pricing, this is really what intrigues people the most and what intrigued me the most is because it's actually really cheap. It's very rare that you find e-reader this cheap. You can get these on AliExpress from around $40 to $60 on their actual official website. I paid $77. The trade-off here is that if you buy from AliExpress, you are going to have a longer shipping time. Generally, I thought the service from the company was good. I felt relatively confident it would arrive and I bought this completely with my own money. This is not something the company has sent me. So what makes this a niche piece of tech that I think you should consider? For me, it's the hackability. Out of the box, it's fine-ish. It's usable. I immediately removed the stock firmware and flashed Crosspoint Reader. While some features are lacking, like images and books, I feel like the speed in which it is being developed and the additional features it has, things like Calibre Web Syncing, I think are a must. I wanted to quickly talk about the development experience because I think that's where this really shines as a piece of niche technology that I think is worth buying. I built and flashed everything using Visual Studio Code using something called Platform IO. All the code in the firmware is C plus and getting started is honestly very simple. Plug in your device into a USB port with USB-C and run this command, which is PIO run target upload. I had a really good experience here using AI to help me prototype and iterate on features, especially when I wanted to move fast without trying to relearn every part of the code base constantly. 
things that I added. I added a minimal navigation bar. I added authentication for Calibre Web. I fixed a few bugs and I sprinkled in percentages everywhere because I always want to know how far I am through a book. The code is well commented throughout. I found it easy enough to navigate and figure out where I needed to hook my features in. Two kind of reality checks here though. First is the dev build moves fast. So I downloaded my copy of the dev build and by the next day, it was so out of date that I was feeling actual FOMO. Even though mine was only like one day old, I was like, I want that cool feature that just got launched. The second thing is the kind of tax one pays on this kind of device in terms of performance. With such a small amount of RAM, I had to be really careful because some ideas looked fine conceptually and I could easily add them, but I actually ended up crashing the device because I wasn't good enough to keep it performant and stable. Look, I'm going to be honest, this is not a Kindle killer. This is not like anywhere close to as nice and usable as a Kindle is. You don't have a full ecosystem. You don't have the ability to buy books. This is something where you need to already have your own digital library that you've already curated. If you read technical books, this is an absolute nightmare. There's no way to highlight or bookmark anything. It's not going to replace my current e-reader. I do find this very readable and very comparable to my books. I think if I was still making the decision though, do I want to read more on my books or do I want to read on this? I'm almost always going to choose the books because it is a better reading experience and it's more flexible. I am a big fan of my books device. This goes with me everywhere. Whenever I travel, whenever I go outside the house, it's not the most like pocketable in comparison. It's not the most pocketable kind of device. It does fit my pouch though when I'm wearing a hoodie. I think this device is really cool. If you have an e-reader like a Kindle or a books and you're actually really happy with it, I think you just keep with what you have. If you are experimenting, if you're really interested in hacking it, I think it's a good fit. And for me, the fact that I can actually hack this and I can write my own firmware and I have added my own features based on what I want out of an e-reader is absolutely huge. Like I have added stuff to Crosspoint Reader already and that to me is a massive advantage. And I think this is a great piece of niche technology that you should consider buying and experimenting with yourself.